yourself, Jan Saha, Tureh Master Bahadur, who called me just over a month ago uh, to again discuss uh, the genesis and the objectives for this conference. We've, uh, we've long been a supporter, I think, dating back to its inception. So we've, so we've long had an interest in making sure that we can get the right minds in the room. And let's not just have another conference for the sake of having a conference. We've said this time and again. We need some of the recommendations that we have enjoyed the benefit of discussing with this government particularly, with the MOD leadership, more so than I think any other MOD leadership team in recent history. When it comes to the draft defense production policy, when it comes to the new offset guidelines which were, which were unveiled by the Secretary DP, uh, when it comes to uh, receiving input on the strategic uh, partnership policy, um, these are all really good examples where we've had inputs through SIDM uh, and through other fora uh, of having regular interaction with the MOD leadership team. And I think it's time that we get down to brass tacks and move forward with the kind of predictability and the kind of transparency and the speed and efficiency that's needed to get uh, to a point where India can rightfully say that it's now looking at self-efficiency self and it's going to become a next exporter. <coughs> I absolutely agree with the Vice Chief when he said uh, yesterday, one of the key things that needs to happen is that we need to improve and speed up defense contracts. We've been saying that for a long time. <coughs> defense contract needs to be speed up, and I applaud the decision by the government of India uh, back in April to stand up an overarching uh, defense planning committee under the NSA that really looks at driving the country's military and security strategy draft capability development plans, and accelerating defense act equipment acquisition, capital equipment uh, 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 defense, category intensive equipment acquisition, excuse me. Um, this is the need of the hour. This is this has been the Achilles here for the longest time. Let's not let's 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 be honest about that. And the armed forces are the ones that continue to suffer more than anybody else. And then if you're talking about a win-win between us and our Indian partners, we aren't able to use offsets as an enabler uh, to really, uh, you know, driving that kind of investment. So let me start with your with your third question, and I highlight a few points. So how do you how do you further develop the aerospace and defense ecosystem? Not just the tier one, but how do you drive down? How do you drill down to the to the lowest tiers? So we we long we long looked at India through our. 70 plus year history here. Founding partner of, of uh, Defense Manufacturing in India, dating back to Jaguar and to Hawk and to other platforms that we have built here with our partners like HAL. Uh, over 50 years, we long viewed uh, this as an opportunity to not just offer defense and security forces, uh, technology advanced products, and tailored solutions, but also a tremendous sourcing advantage for our global supply chains. And so we're steadily building an effective and robust Indian supply chain. That was evidenced with our first major supply summit earlier this year, where we are identifying, qualifying, and selecting Indian companies of every size, DPSUs, public, private sector, and MSMEs. And if I can just use one example, on our M777 program, <clears throat> out of 40 or so approved IOPs, many of them are MSMEs. And we're looking at their tier two and tier threes now, and we're providing that sort of mentor protege people through our quality and build standards that we apply globally, most importantly to US and UK programs. The kind of quality and the kind of delivery schedules that the US Department of Defense uh, expects and the UK MOD depends on. We're driving those kinds of techniques, those kinds of processes, and that not just the know how, but the know why which comes at a much later stage. It comes when you deliver. It comes through obsolescence management. It comes through upgrades of the critical systems. So we're looking at that kind of a time scale, 15 to 20 year time scale, to further develop that expertise and that capability. And my message to a lot of our Indian suppliers and our Indian partners would be, don't just look at us from a, from a manufacturing perspective, but look at us from an R&D perspective as well. If you're conducting R&D, Come talk to us. Either you're an existing partner and a supplier to us or not. Come talk to us. We'd like to look at what you're doing. We'd like to look at what you're actually looking at developing through the startup ecosystem and, and through other various uh, mechanisms. Because we are a world leader in the fields of electronic warfare, 
autonomous systems, advanced manufacturing, robotics, and data analytics. And we continue to uh, invest rapidly in R&D, often alongside with our customers, to identify